Hey guys, welcome to the next video on NumPy tutorial for beginners. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, use NumPy to create some specific array and also we will see how we can reshape our NumPy array and some of the properties related to shaping your arrays. So first of all, let me show you the first method and this method is np.zeros and if you have guessed correctly, this method we use to initialize a specific array with some dimension. So we are going to give some dimension here as an argument. So let's say two by three. And this is going to give us an array of specific dimension and all the values inside this uh, array are zeros. So all the values or elements which this array contains are all zeros. There is one more method which is called np.once and here you can give the same type of argument, let's say three by two. And it, this is going to give you an array all initialized with the value one. So you can see all the values here are one. Now, if you want to initialize the value with some uh, data type, you can also use, let's say, np.once and you can provide an extra argument here, which is called uh, dtype is equal to. So just write dtype is equal to and whatever data type you want to give here, you can provide here. So let's say np.int16 and this dtype argument is going to make sure that this one is of this data type. Now there is one more method which is called np.empty. So this method you can use to provide some shape. Let's give three by three. And this empty method is used to create uninitialized data. So the content is undefined. And once again, I'm going to give the same command. It's going to give us the array of these dimensions. And here also you can provide the dtype. Let me give the list here. You can also give uh, the list instead of uh, this tuple. And then as an extra argument, you can provide that D type is equal to np.int16 and then press enter. And you can see now it's going to initialize these values with the random integers. Once again, when you give the list without this argument D type, and I'm going to just provide some dimensions here in the form of a list, it's going to once again give us uh, this dimension with all ones. But always remember that empty unlike zero does not set the array values to zero. And this means that this may therefore be marginally faster. Now the next method I want to show here is the a range method to create an array of particular range. So here you can provide some range. Let's say we want to provide the range from one to five and then press enter. Now this A range acts similar to the range method in Python. So it's going to create this array, but it's going to exclude this five. This is the property of range also. You can also provide the interval in which you want to see this array. So you can uh, just say, I want to see this array in the interval of 0.5. Then you will get the array in the interval of 0.5 or in the steps of 0.5. Now there is one more method which is called np.lin space. And this method is used to create an array by specifying the range and the number of elements. So first of all, we are going to provide the range. So once again, I'm going to provide the range between one to five and then press enter. So you can see in the result, it returns the evenly spaced number over the specified interval. And in our case, this interval is one to five and we got 50 values which are evenly spaced values. You can also provide an extra argument in this function. And this is the number of samples you want to generate. The default sample is 50 as you have seen here. This is the default sample. So if you don't provide any number here, it will generate the evenly spaced array of sample 50. 
but if you want to provide your specific number let's say we want to just generate an array of 10 values then we can uh, provide this third parameter here and now you will just get the array of 10 evenly spaced values once again if you provide here 5 it's going to give you only 5 evenly spaced value which is 1 2 3 4 5 if you want to create an array of random numbers you can use np.random.random .random and provide your dimensions here and what you will get in return is an array of random numbers which are in between 0 and 1 now let me show you how you can reshape an array so i'm going to create an array of uh, zeros so let me just assign this result to a variable let's say this is c variable so first of all let's see the content of uh, this array c and now i want to reshape this array so there is a method called r dot reshape which you can uh, use to change the dimension of this array so earlier this array was of dimension 2 by 3 and now i want to change the dimension to 3 by 2 let's say so now once you do this the array dimension will be changed to 3 by 2 which means 3 rows and 2 columns you can also change it to let's say 6 by 1 so i'm going to just say 6 by 1 and this is going to give you an array of 6 by 1 but you need to make sure that all these reshaping dimension confirms to the original dimension so for example you just give a dimension which is not confirmed by the original array let's say 7 here and you will get this error which says cannot reshape array of size 6 into the shape 7 7 by 1 let me give you one more example so this time i'm going to create a new variable d and this time i'm going to use uh, once method so this is once method and i want to create an array of let's say 1 by 9 and then press enter which is going to give me an array of 1 by 9 and all the values here are ones now when i use a reshape method on this uh, d array so let's use this reshape method and let's give the dimension let's say i want to give here the dimension of 3 by minus 1 and then press enter you will see this array will be reshaped to 3 by 3 array so why this is happening so because we have provided the second parameter as minus 1 which means that it will be determined based on the actual condition automatically okay, so this array was containing nine element and this means that your matrix will be resized to three by three matrix so now you can see when you see the content inside the you can see the original array never changes you cannot change the size or shape of the original array you can just reshape it and then assign it to a new variable so when you do this i'm going to just reshape it and then assign it to a new variable e and then see the content of e now once again let me create an array of all zero of dimension three by one let's say and there is a method called v stake and h stake so v stake is used to stake multiple arrays in vertical direction and one thing to notice here is the dimension so the dimension of an array must be matched so here you can see e which is of the dimension 3 by 3 and we have a new array f which have the dimension 3 by 1 so let me uh, just create one more variable let's say it's g variable and then i can use np dot v stack and i can provide as an argument both the arrays so i have the array e and i have the array f and it gives us error because this i need to give in the tuple so the error says it takes one positional argument but i have provided two because this i need to give inside a tuple or a list so these argument i will provide as a tuple and then press enter and now you will see this error this error says all the input 
array dimension except for the concatenation axis must match exactly so because this is the 3 by 3 array and we want to add the new array vertically which is not possible because in the 3 by 3 matrix you cannot add the matrix of 3 by 1 if this matrix is of 1 by 3 then this is possible so let's create the array of 1 by 3 so this should be 1 by 3 not 3 by 1 so i'm going to reshape it once again or let's just uh, change the dimension it should be 1 by 3 in order to use the v stake with the array of 3 by 3 so now once again we will see the content of h so now we can once again uh, use this v stake method and this time i'm going to pass h here instead of f which is of dimension 1 by 3 and then press enter and this time i don't get any error and once again when i see the content of g it's going to give us the combination of the matrix e and h so this method v stake can be used to stake multiple arrays in vertical direction there is one more method which is h stake which you can use to stake multiple arrays in horizontal direction and there our f array will work so now when i create one more variable i and i will use the h stake method and here i will provide as an argument the array e which is of dimension 3 by 3 and the array f which is of dimension 3 by 1 not 1 by 3 not like this but it's of dimension 1 by 3 so it's like this right and then press enter and i will see the content of i and now you will see these two arrays are staked horizontally now if you give the array of wrong dimensions here so for example i give h here instead of f which is like this and then press enter it's going to once again give me an error which says all the input array dimension except for the concatenation axis must match exactly and at last i want to show you two more method and they are h split which is called horizontal split and v split which is called vertical split and i want to split this array in the horizontal format so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the method h split and here i can first of all give the name of the array which is g in my case and then i can give the number of splits so for example i want to split this array in three different arrays then i can provide this number three here and then press enter and now you can see the result so this result contains three different arrays one two and three now let's say i want to split this array i which looks like this in the vertical direction so i want to just separate this this and this in three different arrays so i can use once again np dot v split method and first argument is the name of the array and second argument is the number of arrays you want so when i press enter it's going to give me three different array which are split in vertical direction so that's it for this video i hope you have learned something new this time and i will see you in the next video